AM 970 WSTX. All right, all right. Reflections, reflections. Hey, folks, welcome to WSTX 970 AM. I want to express uh, my, my uh, uh, appreciation for all of you who hung in here. We've been here in the station, and we've been having some real serious technical challenges here. And I, I want to say I want to thank all the people who have jumped out of nowhere to bring their expertise to get us back on online. Hey, we only have a half an hour here left. And most of you know that we had a special guest today, Ms. Cher Will. She spells it C-H-E-R, but I say it's S-H-E-E-R. Cher Will, because by her sheer will and perseverance, she's been able to accomplish some fantastic things here to benefit the community. But you know what? We're going to have an introductory conversation in this limited time that we have left, and we've rescheduled an in-depth discussion for the 28th, folks. So mark your calendar, not you, Appa, okay? You don't mark your <laughs> calendar, okay? Okay. <laughs> but people out there, mark your calendar, the 28th of July, 8 o'clock, we're going to crank up and we're going to talk about this thing in depth. But let's start with the conversation here because many of you may have seen on Facebook the graphic there about an app, a phone app called CrowdSave, C-R-O-W-D-S-A-V. All right, now there is a website, CrowdSave.com, that you can go to also to see some of what we're talking about here today, and it's important that you do, all right? Because this app, and I'm gonna just do a little quick nutshell overview, if you have the CrowdSave app, you can go to the crowd save and you can literally see where on St. Croix there is a A E D. Okay? And if you don't know what an A E D is, I'm going to tell you just hold on for a second for the more technical details. But let's put it this way: it's a device that can save a life and has saved a life, at least one that I know of somebody I know very well and make all the difference in the world but when you go to your app and I've got my phone right here and I switch over and I see that nice looking heart and I click on it and then I go and I see it says locate AED and a list comes up that shows the closest one to me the next closest one the next closest one okay so now you're wondering those of you who may not know, what this AED thing that dog talking about, okay? Well, I'm going to defer to the expert. I'm going to turn you over to Ms. Cher Will. And remember now, that's S-H-E-E-R. Give her credit. All right? So, Cher, talk to us. Tell us about this AED thing. What this thing be? This thing be great. <laughs> An AED is an automated external defibrillator. It's used to start a heart that is not beating. Begin if you collapse the from chest. sudden cardiac now arrest, which happens to 350,000 people a year, you have 10 minutes maximum to get an AED. It analyzes your body size and all of the things automatically. You turn it on, it tells you what to do. It tells you to remove clothing, place the pads, how to do it. It talks to you in a very calm voice and gets you all the way through to the point where when the orange button flashes and it says press the orange button, you press it and you very likely have brought someone back from being dead. Okay, well I'm, I'm going to just bring this to reality, okay? We had some folks out on the sea, and they were coming back from, from a, a nice cruise on the sea. And there was a storm coming, and they were trying to hit the first port to get away the storm from this storm. And by the time they got to the port, and they threw out the rope to hook up, one of the, 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 the people on this boat that was there in part of this operation just fell down. And he could tell you that's the last thing he remembered. 
But everybody knew what happened. He had an event that ultimately required for his heart to be restarted. And as God would have it, that port had an AED close by. And they got the AED there, followed the instructions, and boom, that guy is still alive today. All right? And I say that in that we're not talking something pie in the sky that, okay, that just really affects other people. No. You don't know who is going to be called when it comes to things like medical events. You just don't know. So now, I've been having this conversation this morning with Cher, and I'm going to tell you the, the stories that are there to be told. First of all, I want you to understand that the placement of AEDs is a labor of love. No job, no money and compensation, and like our teachers do sometimes, you reach in your own pocket, right, Cher? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it, it really is a labor of love and a matter of, of uh, commitment to our community. Now, the nature of the AED, because it talks you through step by step, it's something that you can use with a little bit of specific training because you don't turn this thing loose on somebody and just say, hey, you could use this thing. I mean, how, how does it work? Well, they can. Well, but talk, talk to me in terms of the ideal situation. The ideal situation is, first of all, you need to be able to recognize when someone needs to have an AED applied. They will be non-responsive, they're not breathing, and they have no heartbeat. Easy to find out about, but if you go to have proper training, you sign up for a CPR AED first aid course it's going to save lives, it just will. Because you never know whether it's, maybe not for yourself, but you can help your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your aunt, your uncle, your coworker, your enemy. You just never know. You don't know, and you don't want to be standing there saying, I don't know what to do. Yeah. So when you take the CPR course, uh, they teach you how to do it. And I wear my, CPR shirt, and it's so easy now. The song's staying alive. Press hard and fast in the middle of the chest. And maybe you're a mother, maybe you're a brother. Okay, so. That's okay, we're gonna have the song for the 28th. That, we're gonna that, be ready. That, okay, good. Mm. That song has the exact beat that you need. And if you sing that song while you're pre pressing on someone's chest, right in the middle of the chest, go down about two inches, don't worry about cracking ribs, they're already dead, and you don't make someone deader than dead. So go for it. And you can bring someone back, even with just CPR, but their chance of survival of walking out of a hospital with just CPR is in the 6 to 24% range. If you would add an AED into the equation, it increases the possibility of survival to 49 to 90%. Wow. That's a very big difference. Okay. Well, you know, folks, I want you to understand that uh, it might sound simple, but we've had situations where uh, folks have offered to donate AEDs to locations and the locations turn them down. Now, I want you to understand some of the dynamics because the first question I'm going to ask is that if a business had to locate one of these at their location. How much money would they have to spend to get it there, first off? For an AED in a wall unit with an alarm on it, which I recommend, the cost is only $1,453. Only $1,450. So you imagine your business person and they got the taxes to pay their rent, to pay their rent. And then, you know, when you first approach them and say, only fifteen hundred dollars you know and, and some of them recoil from this because it's additional expense but you know one of the things that we like to talk about sometimes you and I have been talking about is the cost of a what? Funeral. Oh, funeral. Absolutely. Yeah, funeral. Okay. Much cheaper than a funeral. 
okay? Much, much cheaper. And if it's your brother, father, mother, sister, it's much more important than a funeral, okay? Because you want them alive, alive, that's right. So, would you rather invest toward a funeral or invest toward keeping people alive, okay? So, this means that a business on their own initiative can get one if they wanted to do it that way, exactly. okay? But now you are telling us about the St. Croix Foundation, which when you go to the CloudSave.com site, their icon is there for people to know that the St. Croix Foundation is one of the premium organizations that's involved with funding for these things. So tell us about St. Croix Foundation and, and, and what, what you're doing in partnership with them to for the idea of getting more AEDs on site? Well, when we initially, when our AED was used to restore the life of someone who's very beloved on this island, I didn't know what to do. And I called the fire department and I said, why weren't you there? And they said, why would we? We don't have the equipment and we don't have the training. Say what? Yes. And so I thought, Oh my God, somebody's got to do something about this. And I was in cancer treatment and I, I was heading back to the States for radiation and stuff. So I thought, well, I can't do that. And I thought, no, I have to do that. I'm that someone. So I, I contacted the St. Croix Foundation and I said, tell me what I need to do because I knew people weren't just going to write me a check, you know, and to get a little motivation, you get a tax deduction through the St. Croix Foundation because they're 501c3. So St. Croix Foundation very enthusiastically got on board with this. And so when I started buying the AEDs, other people were saying, well, I would like to have one too. And the company from which I bought so many said, okay, anybody who wants to buy one can have the St. Croix Foundation discount. And basically that's it. And we do need to give a huge, huge shout out to Senator Sanis and his staff because they are the ones that started and are maintaining the Crowd Save app. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. All right. Well, you know, the, the, the important thing here is uh, thinking proactive. Not thinking in terms of when somebody falls down. Like you mentioned, we had children on a basketball court. Absolutely. And one of the children fell down. They had more than likely a cardiac event. And unfortunately, none of the young people there had any idea what to do. So what did they do? They ran. They ran away between fear and maybe trying to get help. They didn't know that if we had CPR in the schools, it'd have been a higher chance that someone would have taken initiative and started compression while somebody else went and got help. And in the same way, we have places like, let's say, uh, when, you, when you go to the app on your phone or you go onto the website and you see that in the Sunny Isle area, um, and you're looking for icons that tell you where to find an a, a AED, you'll see that it's very sparse there. Like, I don't see any in that vicinity, but think of a place where so many people are at any given one point in time. So we've got to get this process going so that we can get more AEDs in other locations and, and when on the 28th I want to talk even more about that so that we can start getting the community rallied in, in, in this respect. Um, now Cher I want to tell you that every time I show someone this app and I explain to them what it's about they put the app on their phone. Okay? okay? Yay. <laughs> and, and you know I really felt like I made a difference. Thank God not the, it's, it's not a situation of somebody having a, 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 an event that requires the use of one. But it, it makes me feel like I've done something to the benefit of the community because should something like that happen, 
that person is now in a position to, to probably be a part of the solution. One thing that you want to do before you open the app is make sure that your location is turned on on your phone. That's right. Because it has to know where you are. Where you are. And what I say to people is don't wait for the event. Do it now. Find out where there's an AED, where you work, where you play, where you pray, where you live. Any place you go regularly, know where there's an AED so that when you need one, have that knowledge. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, there, there, there's a lot here to be said for the community spirit. Sometimes folks are into this thing about, well, waiting on government or waiting on somebody. And I'm glad that you're giving off that example of, hey, nobody said it's not written someplace. It had Ten Commandments, but I didn't see it say on there, wait on somebody. <laughs> okay? <laughs> <laughs> Don't wait for the government. Okay. <laughs> so it's one of those things that the community has to step up to the plate. I want to, to thank Senator Sanders for his role in making sure that this wasn't just an idea and an instance here or there, but something that's picked up momentum. You know, having AEDs around is, by analogy, not too much different than taking a step and going and getting immunized. And, and I say that, you know, yeah, there are people who have controversies about immunization, but the bottom line is, it saves lives in ways that's so invisible to us that we just take it for granted. People pass by and the little box is up on the wall, and they see it, and they have no idea what this little box is for. And this is part of the public education that I'm hoping that through uh, uh, our endeavor here today and on the 28th that we're going to help to spread the word about AEDs in our community and how it is a constructive and necessary thing because ultimately we don't know whose life might be safe. That's true. Okay. And, and people have told me, oh, I'd be afraid to use one. And I said, what are you going to do? Stand there and watch someone stay dead because of your fear? You know, you have to open your heart to people. And this is one of the most important things. Be there for people. You know, and, and, and I'm, I'm going to be, <laughs> I hope humorous, not sarcastic about this. <laughs> they learn how to use a microwave. Yeah. Punch the button, boop, boop, boop. Okay, this thing here talks to you. You press a button and it talks to you and it's, tells you step by step. It's easier to use than a new microwave. Than a microwave. <laughs> and it's really, I kind of look at it as, a um, medical fire extinguisher. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't be afraid to use a fire extinguisher. Don't be afraid to use an AED. There's nothing to it. All it right. tells you what to do. Well, let's let let's see if we can, uh, you know, arrange m more demonstrations. You know, we have our local TV channel six and so forth and so on. Let's see what we can do in the future. Not only to have this conversation, but to do the demonstration and let people see and understand that hey. It's not something to be afraid of, it's something to embrace. If you use a microwave, you use a telephone, you use a cell phone, you use a car, you know, you use the stairs, all of those things you didn't you weren't born knowing how to do. Exactly. But you could learn. Exactly. And in this case, the thing talks you through step by step to the point where someone who hasn't had training could successfully navigate saving a life. But our preference is that the places where these things are located will take the initiative to have their staff or others trained exactly. so that we'll have more people aware and more people there to, to make sure that the right thing happens. Okay? So before the next show, people can look on YouTube and see AEDs and see hands-only CPR and take a look at them and I hope Call in with questions. Alright, well, I what, have answers. what I'm going to do is I'm going to start collecting some of these links and, okay. and get them posted so okay. that people can follow up in between there and, and now and then. And uh, maybe we can even get uh, St. Croix Rescue involved in what we're doing because they have their rescue demonstrations from time to time and they see how we cut the people out of the car. But what happens when a person that comes out of the car is unresponsive and they don't have a heartbeat? What do we do? And we pull out the mannequin and we go through the steps and show them 
how this little AED that just happened to be located across the street, you ran and got it and followed the directions and boom, that person is alive today. Exactly. Okay? Yeah, I, I am really, really fired up about this. I'm really, really fired up about this. You I'm know, so happy. It, it, it's something, no pun intended because it's a lot of electricity, it will fire you up uh, in that context. But it, it's set up for safety and it's set up to save a life. And it's just one of those things, just like in, in the schools, you gotta have fire extinguishers here and there. You got over 500 people in, 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 a, in a location at any given point in time, when you add up all the classes, but if they have an event, do they have one at Central? Do they have one at Complex? And I'm not asking you to answer. I'm throwing this out because I want you to think. Think. Don't wait until we have an event to say, if we had one of these, maybe this person would still be alive. Now, I want to stress the cost of this thing is $1,500. The cost of a funeral is at least $10,000. Okay? And that's just the part for the undertaker. We're not talking about everything else involved. Okay? I rather have my loved one here. Okay? So I could be ticked off at them or hug them or whatever it is I do that's human interaction with them. I rather have that interaction than to go to a celebration and life ceremony because we didn't have an AED. And, and the one that I have that's basically for home use is $1,000. It's $1,000. And honestly, you could ask many, many people if it's worth it and okay. they'll tell you absolutely. All right. Well, for our purposes, I would like to you to, to take up the one that you have and talk to me about it. Show me and tell me in, in, in just simple terms. Keep it simple. Doug, Doug they're not so simple. smart guy. <laughs> <laughs> Break it down for me, please. Okay. On this particular model, all you have to do is press the green button and turn it on. You'll see a little tiny LED light that flashes every once in a while, the little green light, mm -hmm. that means it's ready to help you. You turn on the button, it tells you, you move the clothing, and first of all, of course, make sure the person needs this. But the beauty of these machines, it tells you, open the door, take the pads out. There's pictures on the pads that yep. show you where to put them. Yep. And then, you take your hands off and they tell you to take your hands off the person and it sits there and says analyzing, analyzing, analyzing. And when it finishes analyzing, it will say shock recommended. You're going to continue doing CPR, not when it's analyzing, but between the analysis. It analyzes every two minutes. Between that, you do CPR. Once it's finished analyzing, the shock, shock button will lies. light up. Staying clear of and the, the beauty of this is shock that delivered. if the shock button doesn't light up, if this little computer does not think that you need shocking, it won't. It can't. Only with the shock button comes on. All right. Okay. That that you know that that's pretty straightforward because it's doing the analysis and like if this is not going to help it won't, it it won't, won't allow you to shock the person that's right okay that's right in uh to get their their heart pumping again right okay? and then after the shock after the shock you resume doing cpr, CPR. and sometimes it'll say that you need to analyze again and it will I mean, I, I, I just like the simplicity of it, okay? It is. It's and, and we I, call it dead easy. <laughs> and, and I say sometimes the, the most dangerous thing is the question you don't ask, okay? And I'm going to share this with, with the public because uh, I, I remember a situation where a, a brand new microwave was bought for someone. And it just so happened that like everybody else kind of knew how to use it and was using it. But the person whose house it was in had never been shown the steps. So one day we were there in the kitchen and the microwave door opened, closed and, and starts. And then you hear all these sparks, you know, like electrical sparks going. 
the person had taken and put a, a steel container <laughs> in there. And uh, it's <laughs> of course, after we showed them, it was easy as pie in that sense. There were no instructions with the microwave. This thing comes with instructions. And oh, it feels safe to say that, um, hello, folks, there's nothing we can do here. We are not going to, uh, to, to do an, anything further as far as administering a shock. Exactly. Okay? So it, it is fantastic. And, you know, the one instance that we have where we actually had that event that I talked about, where the person is alive today, is testimony enough for me. And I hope for everyone. We never want to have to use it. We want to have it. Exactly. It's the virus. All right. Share. We're at the end of my show for today. We've got a date for the 28th because we've got to do more in-depth talking about all the different locations and the people who are working with you to get this done. All right. I want to thank you for coming to Reflection. And I'm so, so looking forward to the 20th. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. People of the Virgin Islands, thank you for listening to Reflections. Until next Thursday. All right. I'll see you there.